We're ready to start section 4.2, which is on page 4 of your note packet. The good news is 4.2 and 4.3 are really nice, easy sections. So even though 4 is like a very rigorous, important chapter, we do have a couple easy ones tucked in there. So 4.2 and 4.3 are nice and easy, a little bit new vocabulary, but a lot of the stuff you'll already know about it, did adding and subtracting, or you can only add and subtract like terms and so on. So let's go ahead and talk about some of this new vocabulary. So this term is considered degree seven because the exponent is seven. This one, notice I put in the little one. Anytime there's an exponent that's missing, that means there's an assumed one there, so that means this term is degree one. And remember, terms are things separated by addition and subtraction signs. So there are three terms here, one, two, three. So the first term's degree seven, the second term's degree one. Seven has no variable, so it's degree zero. So zero variables, degree zero, which means all constants have degree zero. Then we've been using this word throughout the course, coefficient. Coefficient is the number in front of the variable term. So we say 3 is the coefficient of x to the 7th. And since x to the 7th is the highest power in the problem, we also say 3 is the leading coefficient. And you'll see in the next class, that's super duper important because that determines whether the parabola cups up or cups down, whether the S curve rises to the right and falls to the left or rises to the left and falls to the right, whether the W shape cups up or cups down. So the leading coefficient is the determiner of all that. So it's important that you be able to identify it. So find the highest power, the number in front, is called the leading coefficient. It may not be the first term. You just have to go down the line till you find the highest power. In this case, the highest power just happens to be the first term. The coefficient of x means what number is in front of x. And again, we can assume ones are in front of any variable if there's no variable present. And we have to take the sign. So we would say negative 1 is the coefficient of x. It's not the leading coefficient. It's just the coefficient of x. And the degree of the polynomial is the greatest degree of all of its terms. So since this is the greatest, we would say this is a polynomial of degree 7 or a trinomial to be even more specific, a trinomial of degree 7. So trinomial means it has three terms. Degree 7 means the highest power I see is 7. So we look at the highest power. That's the power of the polynomial. And you ask why? Because it's the one that determines the shape. So I know because it's 7, it's going to be like an S-curve, like this, where if it was an even one, it would be like this. So even powers look like U's and W's. Odd powers look like S-curves. So important to understand the degree of a polynomial or to be able to find it. And it's also important to be able to see, identify the leading coefficient. So whether it does this or goes upside down or whether it comes, starts here. Anyway, you'll see the importance later. So we're just working on the vocabulary and identifying things, but you'll see the importance later. Okay, so see if you can do number one. I have to put the snorer out, and I'll be right back. Come on, girl. Good girl. How she sneaks in about every other video, I have no idea. I go out and go to the bathroom, she sneaks in. I get a drink, she sneaks in. Okay, so determine the degree. So I see this is power 3. 
this is power 2. Let's write that underneath. I think that's good practice. So the degree of the polynomial is the highest power we see, but let's do the degree. Sorry, I did that. Let's do the degree of each term like we did on the other one. So this is third degree because the power is 3. This is second degree. This one, there's an imaginary one, so that's first degree. This is fourth degree. And remember, when there's no x, we call that zero degree or degree zero, as we mentioned up here. So degree three, degree two, degree one, degree four, and this is degree zero. So according to this box over here, the degree of the polynomial is the highest one we see. So because the highest is fourth power, I know it's going to graph like this. So even powers, like I said, look like u's and w's, where odd powers are like s-curves. <clears throat> so the degree of the polynomial is fourth, the leading coefficient. So I go on that highest term and look at the number in front of it, which is 3. So hopefully you didn't write 16 as a leading coefficient, because the leading coefficient is in front of the term of highest degree. This term has the highest degree, so the leading coefficient is 3, which means the w will cup up rather than cup down. Okay, it gets a little bit trickier. So when we have multiple variables, we call this a multivariant polynomial. Then we have to add the exponents to get the degree. So this term is sixth degree, 4 plus 2. True, I know that um, x and y are not the same. We can't add exponents when they're not the same. But for the power, that's what we do to find the degree of each term. So this is 2 plus 5, so this term is 7th degree. This is a constant with no variables, so it's 0th degree. And what's this degree? 1 plus 1, 2nd degree. So when there's just one variable, no adding needed, you just state whatever the power is, and that's the degree of the term. But when we have a multivariant, which means more than one variable, then we have to add the exponents for each single term, not all the way down, just for each term. Because this is one term, here's a plus, here's another term, there's a plus, another term, there's a minus, another term. So the degree of the polynomial is the highest one, so that would be seventh. And we go in front of that highest and look at the leading coefficient, which is 5. Okay, so hopefully you learned a little bit of new stuff there. So that's some good vocabulary. So when we are adding polynomials, just like if we're adding anything, whether it's radicals, polynomials, um, just x and y equations, we can only combine like terms. So adding or subtracting is only adding or subtracting like terms. So remember, like terms, as I said at the beginning of the variable, <laughs> at the beginning of the variable, that's what I get for writing and talking at the same time. At the beginning of the video, I told you that, and let's underline this whole thing like terms have the same variables and the same powers. So like terms have the same variables and the same powers. So x squared can only be added to another x squared. y cubed can only be added to another y cubed. x can only be added to an x. I can't add an x squared to an x cubed. So that's usually some new to some students because they're like, oh, I didn't know that. I thought an x squared could be added to an x cubed and you get x to the fifth. Nope. Those are not considered like terms if they don't have the same power. 
So when we're combining like terms and all of our polynomials are supposed to be arranged from highest power to lowest power. So when you go to add, always start with the highest powers. I kind of like to use different colors to help me group those. So 6 is the highest power. So 9 into the 6th plus 3 into the 6th is 12 into the 6th. And we do not add exponents. If you remember from your last section, the only time we add exponents is when we're multiplying. This is not a multiplication problem. So we add exponents only in multiplication. Next we have positive 4 into the 4th and positive 2 into the 4th. So that's going to give us positive 6 into the 4th, not into the 8th, positive 6 into the 4th. And see how our powers are descending? Every answer we give in this chapter and beyond have to be in what we call descending order, highest power to lowest power. So constants are considered the lowest power since they're degree 0. And then we have our negative 5, positive 8. Our constants are like terms, so 8 minus 5 is positive 3. And I can't add these. Remember, they're not like terms. So I check to make sure they're in descending order. Power 6, power 4, power 0. Yes, they are. So I am done. Okay, so why don't you try the next one? So go ahead and shut off the video and see if you can do the next one. Same thing, it's just three different polynomials. Don't forget, start with the highest power and work your way down, okay? Okay, so highest power is 9. Is there any other 9's in here? Nope. So that just comes down as is. So negative 9x to the 9. And then the next highest power is 8. So positive 8x to the 8th. And there's no other x to the 8th term, so nothing to go with that. Next we have 7. Is there only one 7 too? Oh, nope, there's two. Good. Make it a little bit more fun. So negative 4x to the 7th. No x to the 7th here. And negative 3x to the 7th. So negative 4x to the 7th and negative 3x to the 7th would be negative 7x to the 7th. Okay, so next, do we have a power of 6? I don't see any powers of 6. Do we have a power of 5? Mm, I don't see any power of 5, so it looks like power of 4 is going to be next. So we have 8x to the 4th and 7x to the 4th and then minus 4x to the 4th. So this will be 15 minus 4, which would be positive 11, x to the 4th. And remember, don't touch those exponents. You add like terms. What I like to say, my saying is, when you add two like terms, you get another like term. You add two oranges, you get another orange. Add two apples, you get another apple. So that's how I like to think of it. That reminds me, don't ever add the exponents. Okay, so next x cubed, no x cubed, x squared, no x squared. So it looks like we're ready to move on to x to the first. So negative 9x to the first and negative 9x to the first will give us negative 18x to the first 
And then it looks like all we have left is constants. So for our constants, we're going to have negative 3 and 